I'm Alex Roberson. I'm Matt Elgin. And I'm Sam Valentine. We're on a stats. And this, this room, room sounds great. great. And then when we got to our song, Try My Hand, I remember people were singing it back to us. And I've never, ever had anything like that happen before. Yeah, he'll sometimes show up to band practice with a black eye. Oh, yeah, I was just working out. Oh, okay, Jacob. <laughs> I have actually gotten worse at my... <laughs> Everybody's thinking, I just wanted to put it out there. Well, hello, everybody out there, our podcast aficionados. This is Reese Williams, and you're listening to This Room Sounds Great. We know you're busy. We know you're hustling and bustling. We know you're knitting booties and replacing light bulbs. And man, you chose us to listen to? (laughs) We're so excited. Thank you. Today, we get to speak to Honest Debts, who I am so excited to talk to. They were one of the most stellar shows we had on Chaco Sessions Live last year, but we hadn't started started the podcast yet. So now I finally get to chat with them and find out what's going on behind these fresh faces and incredible talent that they have. So we can just go clockwise. Tell me who you are, what you do in the band. Is this clockwise? Or I okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My left. Your left? Uh, sure, I'll go. Stage left. Um, <laughs> I'm Sam Valentine. I uh, kind of front the band. I do most of the singing, uh, a little bit of rhythm guitar. Uh, yeah. Hey, this is uh, Alex Roberson. I am uh, really the the second front man, but also mainly the bass player, <laughs> I guess true. you could say, um, and do the backing vocals. And I'm Matt Elgin. Uh, play guitar, do a little bit of backing vocals as well. So you have a two headed front man. No, I was totally kidding. I'm not a second <laughs> front man. <laughs> it's like when you watch Whose Line It Is, yeah. Whose Line Is It Anyway, and they have the three headed Broadway star. <laughs> right, <yes. laughs> so tell me how long you guys have been together. Or have you always been based in Richmond? Yeah, as a band, um, I'm the only one. Jacob's not from here originally. I don't know, but the, of these three, I'm the only one who's not from Richmond. Um, and when I moved here, we started a band back in 2017. Um, so the three of us have been together since then. Okay. Yep. You're the core. And yes, let's, let's explain who's here, who is not here. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so Justin Ott, who plays keys, joined us in the last year. Um, so during quarantine, uh, once things were safe, we started practicing with him and, and writing with him and adding him to the kind of the live lineup. So that's been a huge, uh, asset and a big add to our sound. Uh, and then Jacob Hill, we had another drummer, uh, originally and Jacob joined us, I think two years ago now. Um, and really hit the ground running and has helped write a lot of new stuff and, and add a lot of energy to the band. You know, I was reading your bio, rereading it, because it had been so long since you had been in, and the first line on your site says something about being a mix of pure rock and roll and blues and that sort of thing. So you were on the show before. I have family who tune in from all over. They absolutely loved you. And then they were here visiting recently, and I said, yeah, you remember those guys, those rock guys? And then I pulled you up on Spotify, and it was something... I don't want to say completely different, but it was something with a different influence. And they yeah. said, wait, no, we were talking about the guys that were this, this, this. And it just, and I thought, oh my gosh, you know what? That's right. They're so versatile. They have so many different influences that it's not like you hear them and you're like, oh yeah, that's them. Like that is so interesting to me that you can bring in the R&B, the soul, a little Southern rock. There was a track that we played yeah. off Spotify and it had almost a twang. And I was like, ooh, that's that's what the family from Illinois likes. If, you, if you've <laughs> ever been to one of our band practices before, when we kind of start off, a, a practice we kick it off with any genre that you can think of i mean i mean we've kicked it off with you know jacob throwing down double bass pedal and going into something <laughs> and drop d uh that's really more matt and jacob's chops or you know something twangy so it, i mean it's, it ranges and what would that sound like that first thing you describe it with that but can you can you do that with your mouth what that what that would sound uh, like you really want me to yes <laughs> yes please impersonations who sam do you do most of the writing uh most of the lyrical writing mm-hmm. yeah and I, I typically will bring most of a structure to a song and each of these guys have obviously written some things as well but yeah and what do you, what inspires you to write are you personal experience thinking of the future the environment (laughs) a little bit of everything um it's sometimes it's hard to like capture what it is um and writing is very very hard as anyone who does it knows um and there are a lot of great writers in richmond but um yeah a lot of personal experiences i've been inspired by the city honestly like i didn't grow up here so living here living in Chaco for four years um got a lot of just inspiration just walking around honestly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. are you guys one of the, the these bands who you think of yourselves as a family or is this more of a business um 
do you guys yeah <laughs> i see some nodding yeah, yeah no it's 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 kind of evolved too like again i didn't grow up with these guys matt and alex had known each other forever y'all grew up in the same neighborhood right yeah mm-hmm. yeah so it was i was kind of the outsider coming in and i think all of us collectively got have gotten super tight over the last few years um so it definitely feels more like close friendships obviously and we were we've been like part of each other's weddings and stuff like that mm. so um yeah it's been it's been really awesome so you say you brought the keys player on when things were safe, like during the pandemic. So what has been going on since we've had a lot more freedom? What's what's going on the next six months for you and in the beginning of next year? I mean, everybody's saying, hey, we're ready for some music now. So can you uh, can you play? I mean, so yeah. it's starting to get busy again, and which is a great sign. Um, and it's really exciting to be able to, to be able to choose shows to go and play for and and get back on stage again. You know, it's been, it's been great to have that vibe again i i haven't talked about it a whole whole lot i mean obviously we were happy to we wanted the platform here so that musicians could play in a safe way during the pandemic that was the whole idea is wow you know you need more than just band practice and i know it was just me and my little hands clapping but it felt good you guys got to perform and then i went to brown's island a couple of months ago and i saw mighty joshua and so standing there in the audience facing the same way with everybody feeling the energy i just bawled my eyes out because it's so different i mean it's great that we were here it's great that there were other avenues for everybody to get together and perform but it does not beat the electricity of the back and forth it doesn't the venue and yeah we played a show um it was like i guess it was our second show back and it was on the hoff rooftop Mm -hmm. um and it was fourth of july weekend and it was absolutely packed and people were jumping around with us and there were fireworks in the background and it was like one of my favorite shows we've ever played just because it was, it was like, this is a real show. Like mm-hmm. this is for real. And it feels good to be making a fool of myself in front of people again. And it's, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. You, and you have a residency there, don't you? We do. Yeah. Um, we're actually playing uh, two days from now or one oh, tomorrow. <laughs> what day is it? Good Lord. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of which, which has been a memorable performance for each of you? I already said mine. Yeah. Matt, you go first. Cause I got plenty to choose from. Hold on. And it could have been, you know, heartwarming, or it could have been a shit show, and it's just memorable that way, or the audience was super into you. A couple of those, you. for sure. Yeah. yeah, those are the best. We love hearing about those. I think one of the ones that comes to mind for me is when we did the EP release show at Carey Street. Um, it was just, uh, for me, it was maybe one of the first shows that we played where, you know, it, there was just a ton of energy and you know it just was kind of a a special night in a lot of ways so um that one was was a lot of fun that's kind of one that sticks out for me super validating that night too like that was the first time and carrie street cafe was a very small um really missed that place but a uh, very small stage smaller venue and we completely sold it out and had people you know obviously outside which we had really never done and then when we got to our song try my hand i remember people were singing it back to us uh. We actually have to squeeze in a little sample of that.
I have never ever had anything like that happen before, and I was like, "What is happening?" Yeah. I, I stopped singing at one point because I was like, "This is incredible!" Like, oh. yeah, that was that was a really cool one. How touching! Have you thought of one? Yeah, um, <laughs> that, that was a good one too. But uh, going back even further a little bit, we had our first, like probably our true first out of town show, um, Virginia Beach, and it was um, it was through the program. Remind me again. So far sounds. So far yeah. sounds and. Um, it was the first time we actually met the band Weekend Plans, who is oh, yeah. a Richmond-based band, um, who our keys player plays for, who yeah. we uh, formed a brotherhood with. Um, and have now stolen a member from now. <laughs> He's still in both bands. Time share. <laughs> um, we met those guys there, um, and we were playing in the small little music studio at a rescheduled venue because the first venue didn't work out, and it was last minute. But if you've ever been to a So Far show, it was one of those magical experiences where people just show up, and they are there to listen to music. Yeah. Um, and and we got to play for an awesome crowd. We had an awesome group of, of two women who came from Nashville to play before us. Yep. And then Weekend Plans closed out the night with – what was the first time I had ever heard them and was blown away by just such an incredible, unique sound. So, um, yeah. yeah. A lot of community that night, I felt like. Because it was like, we ordered the odds another Richmond band would be up there. Like, we had applied to play this out-of-town show, and Weekend Plans was there. We hadn't met them before. And then we opened up for them a couple weeks later, and then they opened up for us, and it was kind of a They opened up at friendship. our EP release show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You That's- guys are such nice guys, though. I bet you're just magnets for, like, great experiences and good people, honestly. <laughs> You just have the uh, best. Matt didn't think that's what she was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thought I was going to make a hard left there somehow. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys toured together? Have you been in a vehicle or on a bus for a length of time or just been in the car for days at a time? I want to hear some juicy oh boy. touring <laughs> we've, stories. We've got some stories, but they've all been pretty much like one and done tours, I guess. If you mm-hmm. call them. They're not really tours, just like out-of-town shows. Um, like we played down Blacksburg a few times. We played Norfolk area a few times. Um but yeah, we haven't done like a multi-stop tour yet. That's something we're still kind of building up to. I think once we get a, a full length out in the world, that, that'll be probably the time we'll do it. Yeah, I mean, we were building up a lot of momentum last year when we I'm sure when we were starting. Um, we had landed the initial residency with the Hoff, which was I can't one of the Fridays, and we were planning on releasing in a whole length, you know, album and doing like a summer tour or something like that with like a couple weekend dates, but. Um, you know, that was thrown into a wrench, but you know, I think we're, we're ready to have that experience as a band. You know, yeah. we have a Portsmouth show coming up in September. Oh, nice. So we get to do another, yeah, mm-hmm. that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> What's everybody in the band known for? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's, Matt's known for not really saying a whole lot, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. I think I remember from your performance, I think it, it, there was just sort of a stoicism, but you're playing, you were shredding it. And it was oh, amazing. Yeah. I think I probably commented on it when I was like, you just, you're very composed in certain ways, but then you were just crushing it. It was great. I feel like, <laughs> well, I feel like we should answer about each other instead of about yeah, ourselves. Yeah, of course. I like that game. Of yeah. course. Is anybody a practical <laughs> joker? R slash roast. Is anybody, <laughs> is anybody a pig? Is anybody super tidy? Is, you know. Oh, man. I don't know. Uh. Jacob does martial arts in his garage. Uh, yeah. That's my <laughs> yeah, he'll sometimes show up to band practice with a black eye. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just working out. Oh, okay, Jacob, what's up? Yeah. He walked into a door. All right. Al's super passionate and super, like, just energetic on stage. Just talking about, like, the second front man thing. Like, people literally come to our shows and they're like, yeah, like, for Alex. Um, which yeah, is I think you got sweet. a lot of comments on YouTube. And I think that's the last rare time. with like mm-hmm. a bass player. It really is. It's, I've never played with anybody like that. Where it was like they're on most bass players are pretty reserved. I yeah, feel like. yeah. And you are not. I <laughs> maybe I, tone it down on that. I, I, <laughs> I only have four strings to play, so I need to do a little bit more to make up for it, right? So <laughs> I, I play a few extra notes and uh, stand out. Um, a lot of them kind of tuck away and their eyes are closed. They're yeah. just doing their thing. But yeah, you've got the energy. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's 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 fun, especially when you're when the crowd's feeling it. And you know, with Richmond, you have um, you have such a, a a good camaraderie in the scene. So when when you're playing music at these venues, you're playing for these other artists that you've seen shows with, been to other shows with, or seen them perform. And they're right there next to you, kind of just cheering you on. And right as you get off the stage, you know, doing the same things of, hey, that was such a great show. You guys are crushing it. So yeah. that that really feeds into the what you see me doing on stage, I guess. <laughs> that was actually, I yeah. mean, you naturally answered my next question is, what do you guys think of the Richmond music scene? What mm-hmm. do you love most about it? And what would you love to see alter or change as we open things back up? That's a big question. 
Um, I love Richmond. I, this That's like one of the reasons I moved here, one of the main reasons. And where'd you come from? Uh, I grew up southwest Virginia, like oh, okay. Salem area. Okay. Um, and I had visited when I was at JMU in college, and I was like, I need to move here, like immediately. Um, and one of the things I loved about it early on is people like us who play almost exclusively original music. We play a lot more covers now, but um, we were just able to get a shot to even play a show. Like Strange Matter was the first place we ever played. We got a show there. Um, oh, rest in peace. Gross, but I was just we, uh, yeah, like that was uh, Emilio's. Yeah, Emilio's. Like a lot of play, and then even the Camel. Like we got a last minute like Monday night slot, and we're able to just kind of build from there. You can't do that in Virginia in very many places at all. So that's that's my favorite thing about it in the community. Like Alex was saying, you you can't do that very well. But you also like have a natural crowd that that goes, oh yeah, Richmond's a good music scene. So I'm gonna go to these venues and go check out these local bands. So that that, that we have that going for us too. Yeah. Like, Are you one of the bands that hopes Richmond? You know, I've heard the comment that they wish people wish Richmond was a quote unquote legitimate music scene. Maybe like. Nashville or Austin or New York or something like that. I personally love that we're under the radar. You know, I mean, I want everyone to be successful for sure. And there's room enough for everyone. And I get from that perspective, you wish there was a little more spotlight, but I also just really enjoy that. It's sort of a best kept secret. What do you think? Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I mean, I think there's, there's definitely pros and cons on, on either side. I mean, the, you know, the bigger the scene is, the more opportunities you get for, all the bands that are part of it but at the same time I don't know I maybe I'm biased because I've always lived here but I think there's there's kind of a unique quality that under the radar kind of aspect to the scene that I think you lose that you kind of lose part of what makes the the Richmond scene special in a lot of ways I think we would and I don't want to circle the block more than once or twice to find parking so. right exactly I'm just saying well and it's also like with Richmond there's there's so many different scenes too right like the hardcore scene that's here and thriving like I'm not even a part of that and I know about it and it's there's there's so many big like communities that are not just one specific thing. Like Nashville is very country heavy and Richmond has certain like inclinations musically, but we play a different style than like Tyler and like some mm-hmm. other people who've been on the, the podcast and we're all able to find a, a place in Richmond, which is super cool. Mm-hmm. And the support. Gosh, yeah. I mean, you hit yeah. it. Like it is great to get off stage and everyone's just so excited for you to be there and Hey, how can we help each other? And just, you know, I've never known a music scene where, there are so many members that have five projects. Everybody's just, you know, and, and they're open to do that. You know, I just watched, um, I just watched the Metallica documentary making a monster and, you know, they lost their bassist because, you know, James didn't want him going off and doing his own project because he didn't want him to like it more. And he thought it would impede on them. And, but it's just lovely. I feel like in Richmond, everybody just says, Oh man, you, you want to do country on the side, even though we do gospel. Great. Go for it. We'll, we'll come see you. We'll help you sell tickets. I feel like a lot of bands are formed that way in Richmond. It's like, Hey, I have this really cool like project idea. And then all of a sudden it turns into Mekong Express or one of those big, you know, that just like where you bring the best of the best together and you can like just, you create craft these projects so uh, yeah. i mean I, I, yeah mm-hmm. do you guys have any good stories of first bands with cringy names or terrible songs <laughs> it's, we had some pretty bad names for this one i feel like really i can't, I can't remember them but we had, it took us a long time there were some bad ideas yeah. starting out for sure well and this one's still like phonetically challenging <laughs> for some people <laughs> really <laughs> yeah hmm. just like a lot of silent consonants uh but uh no i i was in oh, i was in a band in high school called uh Public nuisance, <laughs> which not, is pretty sick. Not yeah. public enemy. Rock no. and roll. Just yeah, a it was nuisance. pretty rock and roll, man. Um, <laughs> nuisance. So that and was do you pretty think anybody heavy. was going to know how to spell nuisance every time? No, no. We played like two shows. <laughs> <laughs> They were like talent shows. Did you write your own music or did you just uh, do covers? Unfortunately, yeah. I was Ooh. writing the music at that time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You write yeah. about a skateboard? Or, yeah. I was uh-huh. wearing like a Billabong t-shirt. Mm-hmm. and uh, Yeah. For some reason, yeah, I can picture it. Who do you guys listen to? Who influences you? I mean, coming from the from a basis perspective, you you have like some some like Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, as like you that up progressive kind of funk, and then but then I, I always gradually go back to a a, a very funk bass, um, just as very bass heavy, like a Parliament. Uh, sort it, of. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, George Clinton. Like, I mean, I mean, those that's what I listen to nine to five when I'm working, just because it keeps me going, you mm-hmm. know. So. Mr. To my right. Um, I've kind of moved through a lot of different influences. I think I definitely, starting out when I first picked up a guitar, I was very much in the kind of classic rock, southern rock 
camp. Like I loved like Skinner and Allman Brothers mm-hmm. were a huge influence in that sort of thing. And um, from there, I've kind of you know jumped back and forth into some jazz influence and um, some heavier stuff, some metal and stuff, and country. And um, so it might. Shuffle, um, I always joke, would be pretty terrible at a party just because it's all <laughs> over the place. And I think yeah. that's I kind of is the same way for the the kind of musical influence side of things too. So record scratch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's one of the cooler parts about this band, I think. And and you touched on it at the beginning, like the, all the different genres. Like it's pretty evident that we all listen to very different stuff. And I think we're always trying to find ways to like keep it interesting for everybody in the band. It's not disjointed though. No, it's, well, that's I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. It doesn't, it feels that way sometimes. Thankfully, but, yeah, it doesn't sound um, like you're schizophrenic at all. It's just. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, and I think yeah, like that's these two guys have very different musical influences and in what they listen to on a daily basis, and then I'm kind of the same way with Matt, and then I obviously gravitate towards vocalists a lot, so I listen to a lot of old school stuff like Al Green and mm. um, you know people who just phrase things and I'm always trying to steal from you know the greats but I also listen to everything that they just said so it's it's all over the place for sure mm-hmm. what do you what is going to be what is going to define success for Honest Debts I mean are you wanting to be a stadium band do you just want to make a living at it do you want to produce a certain number of records every so often <laughs> I, I mean we we are still asking our that question ourselves as we're talking about it as mm-hmm. a band because it's a time commitment. It, the, the time commitment is only growing, and that's that's awesome because that means we have so much more ahead of us, and we have so much more to progress with. Um, I'm not giving you any substance to this answer because <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, yes, that's... Alex. Could you be any more vague, please? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Sam. No, I, no it's, it's, it's kind of hard to define because I think success is also like so subjective. And for us like that EP release show in 2018 was a huge success. And that for us, we were like, this is like when I started the band or when we started the band, I was like, I'd never had thought that anyone would ever come listen to it. I didn't know. I didn't know if there was like a place for it. So people coming out of that show and singing my lyrics back to me was insane. But then, you know, even like landing the residency, that was another step where I was like, this is a really cool thing that I would have never even thought about or could have had a position to ask for. So I think for us, it's been like very small intervals of success. And so, you know, whether the ultimate goal is we can go on a national tour and all quit our day jobs and stuff like that, like that obviously would be amazing. Um, But for now, it's just like keeping it fun, keeping it something that we're all like thrilled to be doing and makes us want to have our instruments in our hands, um, you know, every week and every month. That's a great answer. I mean, it should, your goalposts should move as you continue, you know, I mean those incremental victories you you know it seems I don't want to say unobtainable but you think oh that's going to be great if that would ever happen and it happens and you're like okay this is every day what's the next step so that's that's great if you go back to what you're talking about how bands are piecemealed together I mean that's kind of how we were made you know built together like hey we know this bass player hey we know this guitar player it never like we never dawned on us that we're going to form this band that's now like like contemplating hey you know, paying for a full length album and dropping that. Like Mm -hmm. we were just a couple of guys jamming and saying, Hey, this is a lot of fun to play music together. Oh, Hey, maybe my, my company wants us to come play a gig. Oh wait, (laughs) now we're actually playing a residency every Thursday, every third Thursday. Like it just, it just kind of grew exponentially with a weird hiccup, um, for the last like 18 months. Um, but, but it's, I don't know. It's just exciting for me to see that there's not an end in sight, which is and it's so fun. Yeah, like, it's incredible to me because when you when you guys performed, and this is no disrespect to anybody else we had up until then. I mean, everybody was finding their footing, and and everybody you know guessed that we had had work it had been established for decades and were wildly talented, but there was something so strong and cohesive. I th- I want to say you guys were the first band that we thought. Oh, they're gonna make it. Like they're they're oh, wow. they're a band that boy. If anybody deserves to be, you know, rocketed to the top, these guys. I, there was just really something about you. You. your performance and your camaraderie, and of course how you, you know. For me, it's a big thing too is how you conduct yourselves beforehand. You know, that was before the podcast, so I think it might have been just a quick call or an email. I like to. I wanted to see how people spoke if they talk too long or if you know. <laughs> am I gonna? Have I to do. Re- so yeah, yeah, am I gonna have to reel yeah. this person <laughs> in, or am I, or is it gonna be like pulling teeth? <laughs> You know, because yeah. we didn't have this opportunity to sit and chat before the actual show. Um, but there is something, you know, you, you can piecemeal it together, but there is something very, very special about your dynamic and your performing. And um, so, yeah, we I mean, we, we definitely like work hard to, to 
try to sound good live. <laughs> um, definitely practice. And, and I think everybody in the band, maybe except for me, is, is a very precise musician. Matt especially is, is somebody who's just like so technical. And I think that adds a lot to the live sound where it's just you have like these people who are so good at what they do and then you can piece it together in a way that makes sense stylistically. It's it's really, it's been pretty amazing just to watch like all of us kind of teach each other things and grow as we've built, I guess. As you should. Do you guys have any pre-show rituals? Is there anything you do beforehand? <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Big laughs and knowing glances. So we may not get the real answer, but we know something's there. <laughs> Sam, you get... Uh, we do. Uh, it's called Room Temperature Jameson. Um, and it, that is something, yeah. We've been doing that since our very first show, I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and it will go out of our way for the Jameson. Like, if it's not at this bar, we'll go to find a different bar and then come back. You know? uh-huh. I don't know if we can say that for copyright purposes. Oh, yeah. We are looking yeah. for sponsors for yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah. great. Jameson US, yeah. And I believe that's called Neat. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if room temperature is the proper bar. Jacob calls it pain. Um. <laughs> He's not a big whiskey guy. No. Oh, poor, poor guy. <laughs> Join the wrong band. Anybody got a good uh, a good worst roommate or house guest story? Anybody stayed with you that you just couldn't wait to leave, or you ever lived with somebody that just was an oddball? I mean, when I when I uh, it wasn't really I didn't have a bad roommate, but one of my rooms was the band's practice spot, and that turned into a, an interesting room for a bit until my wife said, "Hey, we should probably think about different a different setup here." So. <laughs> we, we got we got uh, noise complaints at my apartment a few times because yeah. we lived in the river lofts down here, and Blake, our drummer at the time, had like pads on his drums, and we were tr- doing everything we could to be quiet, and we literally got yelled at by one of my neighbors. She like opened the door and it wasn't like, hey, can you keep it down? I was like, hey. Um, and so we got that. And then, yeah, we went to Alex's and it was like your office, which is not a small room, but it's no, not it's a small. large room. It's, a, it's a, like a and nine we were, by 10 bedroom. We were in there sweating it up. Yeah, Cozy. It was, yeah, it was fun. And my two cats didn't like it very much. <laughs> Yeah. So, so to, according to the cats, you guys were the bad roommates. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. yeah, maybe that's the story then. Yeah. Anybody have any cool hobbies or interests outside of the band? That they, you know, anybody a stamp collector or a lint collector or play a weird video game or lots of we have I've had a lot of video game <laughs> stories. I, I, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm a big gamer, I guess. So. Um, <laughs> It's a lot of knowing glances at Alex. Yeah. No, my so they're laughing at my gamer tag, which I'm not going to say because it's changed now. Oh, it's um, changed. Oh, it's, have it's they ridiculed into ridiculed no, you into no, changing no, no. it? No, I'm just not going to say it because uh, it, it's my persona online, mm-hmm. and that persona might be much different from my person. Okay. Yeah. Do you have yeah. children? Are you trying to protect the identity? Uh, of well, that, that was that was my wife's concern. She's like, I don't want my our kids, you know, if we have kids, to know that that was your account growing oh. up. Oh, and yeah. it's not that it was. It's not okay. It's it, it's heavy sack. Everybody, <laughs> that was my name, and it's changed. It's gone. Okay, heavy sack. He's Does that make you guys happy? Is that what it everybody made me wanted? Really happy. I don't know if you heard. I laughed <laughs> okay. a lot. Uh, I mean, is that even appropriate? Can you, are you going to have to bleep it out on your podcast? No, no sir. Okay. Let well, it ride. Is Let that ride. because you go to the grocery store and you buy a lot, and so there's some heft to the bags you bring home? Is that what it is? It, that's all. I guess so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was just a comical joke mm. that has it. stuck for six years. and and. So now. Alex has a lot of personas, actually. So we all call him Big Al, uh, which I don't remember when that started, but... It, it's it's a different person than Alex, and then his LinkedIn is what is it? Alex Roberson, MBA. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of different stages. Uh, a lot of different. He's a, he's a man of many talents. Yeah. He's had some learning. I that, that's what I do for fun, I guess. <laughs> 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 what is Matt? What's the dumbest way you've ever injured yourself? The dumbest way I've ever injured myself. Either nobody was watching and you're going to tell us, or somebody saw it and we'd find out about it anyway. <laughs> Let's see. I I broke a couple bones growing up as a kid, always doing something stupid, generally <laughs> involving a snowboard or something similar. Um, yeah, I think I was trying to show off one time when I was a kid and ended up breaking an arm and being in a cast for few weeks so that mm. that's definitely up there in terms of uh the uh <laughs> risk reward ratio <laughs> who are you trying to impress i uh, i think just the mountain in general i don't think it was just uh <laughs> the mountain in general. 
<laughs> no particular target. Always just, on. That's life's, right. a, life's a stage, Matt. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, I'm sure you've you've got some good ones, uh, Big Al. <laughs> See, so Matt, yeah. Gosh, catching on. That's, yeah, Matt's a pretty careful person. Like, I don't think he lets me like grab very, his gear to move it because I'm cautious. very clumsy. So you're coming at the right person for this question, and it's I think you're attacking me. But uh, <laughs> I digress. Um, <laughs> um, what is the way I've gotten injured? Uh, the one I always um, go to is I used to ride dirt bikes when I was growing up, and uh, I was I was in a neighborhood and. Not a neighborhood, but it was like a rural neighborhood that had like, you know, long driveways. And all my friends said, hey, hit the jump rope going over the driveway. And I went into the drainage ditch that's at the end of the driveway, snailed the uh, PVC pipe that's underneath the driveway, flipped over the handlebars. The bike came over, hit me in the back of the head, knocked me out. I landed in dog poop. I mean, it was... (laughs) was Insult injury. That's right. So I went to the hospital like smelling terrible and just had a long night after that. And this is not, is this not on America's Funniest Home Video? No, it's not. It was, no. <laughs> you get captured at all. Huh? No, it was before smartphones, actually. Where was the poo-poo on you? Uh, it was all over my helmet and shirt. <laughs> so, like, like face first. How old were you? 15. Uh, this was, oh. like, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't ride dirt bikes anymore. <laughs> Man, and you want to be cool? I mean, that's like it's not like a little boy where it's like, oh, the poor thing. It's like fifteen. You were trying to be Billy oh, yeah. badass. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's on you. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sam, what it's okay. I got a worse one. Um, this was honestly way too recent. Uh, I and this not even really an injury, but I, uh, as you can see, I have kind of long hair on top of my head, and I burnt some of my hair off trying to light a cigar on a grill burner. So uh, we can cut if y'all want to. Can we leave? <laughs> Let's see. It didn't invo- involve a Floby, which I was waiting to hear when you mentioned long hair. During the pandemic, I decided to cut my own hair with a Floby. No, yeah. <laughs> I would have just gone bowl cut if I'd done that, yeah. The old school, yeah. How much product do you have to use in that, Sam? Not very much. You'd be surprised. Wow. Yeah, it's just kind of given up at this point and just lays down the way I want it to. It's got some natural body. That is a uh, shout out to my barber for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did you let it go long during pandemic? Oh, yeah. Did yeah, you and it, it looked yet? terrible. It looked so bad. Yeah. Alex looks really good with long hair. I do not. Mm. No, it's 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 on my ID right now, and it's really bad. How I long? Like it. How long? Like flippy? Like, like European like flippy? Very, not yeah. Either. I mean, pretty long down to the shoulders and with the mustache. It's you had bad. some lettuce oh, at one point. Uh, yeah. It's flow. I'm showing it to her right now, and it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> for those of you keeping score at home, <laughs> showing it on the <laughs> The stash. Forget the hair. <laughs> yes. I How's it going, Mr. Carter? <laughs> I like it. Woo. I like it. Yeah, that's about all the facial hair I get, so that's all I get to keep. You've, you've got some, you've, it's balanced now. You think you've so? Got some, yeah, uh, yeah. That's the got, pandemic. That's <laughs> <laughs> you've been growing that for 18 yes, months? that's right. <laughs> I actually have. This is all I can do. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's pretty pitiful. Uh, all right, so we have the residency. Are you guys working on a new EP? Like, what's like in the studio? I know we we talked about sort of in general what's what's in the near future for you guys, but what are you? What's your focus? Yeah, um, I mean, the, the getting back into like live show shape has been the biggest focus, but we also did a good bit of writing um, during quarantine and after, um, and so we we have a lot of new material that's never been recorded. We've only done uh, a six song EP in 2018, and then two singles mm. uh, I think in 2019. So um, we have, we're getting close to having enough where we feel like we have a full album. That's probably the next step for us. We cut a a demo, uh, with someone that we think we're going to work with and we feel good about it. And we're kind of starting to iron that process out starting in October. So, uh, aiming for a full album and that's kind of nice having some gigs on the calendar so we can start funding that again. How many tracks is on what, when you say a normal album, what, what, what's an average number of tracks for you guys? 10? Yeah, I think my my goal personally, I don't know how you guys feel, is to have too many and have to trim it down to like ten or twelve, mm-hmm. um, and then maybe have some like extended, you know, B sides or something. Matt, what was the first piece of music you ever owned, and what format was it on? Oh man, uh, I believe actually my brother gave me a copy of an InSync album when I was very young, and that's <laughs> the first one that I remember, and, and I was regret saying CD? that out loud. Out, yep. Uh, it was a CD. I think uh, there might have been some Jimmy B- 
Buffett tapes when I was nice. real young as well, too. So I'm going to claim that one rather than the uh, the first answer. So. You'll take Parahead <laughs> over the boy band. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting to know you, Matt. All right. <laughs> You're, do you want me to do fins to the left and fins to the right when you guys are <laughs> we, here? We could do in that, a yeah. Weeks? <laughs> Alex. Oh, um, uh, it was this cassette tape. Uh, it was the police, and it was one of my dad's cassette tapes. Um, and yeah, I mean that just kind of goes hand in hand with he's one of like my biggest influences musically. Um, all the music that he played, so all the all the tapes that I found and probably tore up as a child because I didn't know what these things were. Um, yeah. And then do you remember Hit Clips? That was uh, we were like very young but Hit Clips came out those little like cartridges that you'd plug in. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yes, yeah. now I do. I, I feel like I had a bunch of those. I so I think like like yeah. That that was a big big part of my childhood, but I don't remember them, so I think right. it was like for like a, a year. I don't know. <laughs> do you remember mini discs? Yeah, the little tiny CDs. They were right after yeah, mm. and they lasted two years yep. i think sony yeah. had a little cd mini cd player and yeah well, anyway clyde's a cool cat so i'm sure yes. if he was yeah. your music influence yeah uh, he didn't do the hit clips that was not <laughs> no no he, he, did, he, he was the police cassette i'm yeah. sure yeah <laughs> so yours was cd cassette what about you uh i have two that i remember being like my first like experience with recorded music that i would like wear out um my mom had the thriller album <gasps> And I used to put it on our like big tall speakers in the house and like run around the house like dancing to it. And then my dad had a like a ninety two Chevy pickup that he used for work and he kept a bunch of old cassettes in there. And one of them was a George Jones cassette and then the other one was a Willie Nelson one. And I remember just like loving that music and loving like the lyrics and all that kind of stuff. And even like super, super young being like, Wow, like this is really cool, cool stories, you know. So very different. <laughs> sides That's a of that. great variety. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hit clips yeah i don't know why i brought those up uh, <laughs> i'm like back. embarrassed that i brought them up now <laughs> the, I, you know why i brought them up it's because i had a bunch of in sync hit clips <laughs> oh, that's, that's the association, yeah. there it is i get i see the influence in both of you guys for sure that's right <laughs> you bring it out on stage yeah matt matt <laughs> exactly. especially matt brings is, out the, the, mainly choreo. the choreography yeah, the choreo. <laughs> Yeah. Now you guys, your performance, you're, you you have been on with this before. You're coming back. You guys are our last concert in our summer concert series. That's our partnership with Hardywood. And then even bigger is you're not performing in the studio. We're going to be performing at Hardywood. Shaco Sessions That's Live right. is going to be coming to you live yep. from Hardywood. And and we're rolling in the launch of the Richmond International Film Festival. Yep. Yeah. How's that feel? Wild. Yeah. How's that feel? Yeah, Carlos has been updating me as like as it's gotten bigger. It's I like, know. oh, we're doing this, and now we're doing that. And I was like, whoa, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty so. pretty thrilled with that. That's that's super honored to be a part of that. Absolutely. Experience. Yeah. So, we would like really to add cool. another partnership to the night. We would <laughs> yeah. like to we'd like to pull this person <laughs> yeah. in. Hey, awesome. can we get this going? Yeah. So it should be. Um, and I think with it being kind of dual events, it'll be like people that may come to see us that maybe normally wouldn't come to the festival, but also the other way around where people mm-hmm. might be at the festival that might not normally hear us. So mm-hmm. I think it'll be a really cool. Uh, kind of crossover event, so definitely excited and honored to be part of that. I think so too. Hardywood's incredible. Have you played in the room yet? Have Not since played? it's been oh. renovated. No. Yeah. And what do we like to drink when we're there? After the Jameson. <laughs> I don't know if they have that there. Um, <laughs> they they won't have Jameson there. You will have to BYOJ. <laughs> the uh, the Virginia IPA. I like that one. The mm-hmm. VIP. I don't know if they say Vipa or whatever, but I like that one. I mean, like it's it's between that or the or the single, just because that's what I was. Yeah. Raised on? Is that appropriate? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in your bottle from, from when, when, right. when you were a child. <laughs> yeah. That's how Clyde got you to shut up when, <laughs> when, when you were teething. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you like to drink? Uh, I think I like the, the Richmond lager there. The IPAs are all, all good to try, but yeah, hard to go wrong with the lager too. I've mm. been on their uh, the uh, peach cuvee because mm. they it's steeped in... in in these barrels that had bourbon or something out or champagne i don't remember they're it's got an extra flavor and it's 12 percent abv and you know oh my gosh. <laughs> could have just started with that yeah, yeah. 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 the yeah, magic the magic that they do <laughs> yeah where can people go for more information where do people find you 
So we're on uh, all the major streaming platforms, you know, the Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube's a good one for us, um, all that kind of stuff. And then um, obviously watch the, the live stream. That's a good uh, example of our live performances. Um, and then we'll be playing at the Hoff, uh, likely through the rest of the year, once a month. And we've got some other fun shows around town and elsewhere. Any organizations you want to plug? Anything, any partnerships or volunteer things? Anything that you want a couple extra ears on? Tip your bartenders. Yeah, there we That's go. That's always our, our our plug at the end of the night. Mm-hmm. And we did, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we did some sh- some shirts during the pandemic that were fun, um, and we're able to, to donate some of those proceeds to the Save Our Stages. Um, oh, that's right. Fun. So yeah, that's that right. was that was really cool, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Justin works in the music industry, our keyboardist, and so I, I think we also just want to make sure people show some compassion to the music industry as it, mm-hmm. they open up their doors. I mean, they're putting a lot, you know, they're doing a lot for bands to allow us to play music for our crowds again. So, you know, just make sure we're showing some compassion to all, all these venues who've been struggling for the last, you know, 18 plus months. You and know, patience, sure. because yep. I will tell you, I've gone to uh, several venues in the last few months, mostly outdoor venues, and there are hiccups. You know, they're transitioning. They had to, of course, transition from everybody being there in person to either takeout only or online only. And then they've had to transition very quickly to accommodate for the influx of people again. And there's going to be hiccups. You know, everyone's had a lovely attitude about it. I mean, no one's been terrible, but there have been hiccups. And so just be patient and know that it's just because they're having to pivot yet again. (laughs) And even though it's what they did before, it's been a long time. Everybody's kind of out of practice. So yeah, compassion and patience right now is what we need because you're there supporting a musician and they're happy to see you, but we just got to iron out a few little kinks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see you guys again. Yeah, now that I know excited. you a little bit better. Be and we'll get to see. Um, were Jacob and um, Justin. Justin, Justin with you last time? Or? They were. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Justin, so it's all the same. That, was, that was Justin's, I think, second show with us ever. And he had played one live at Brambley and then this one. Um, and so even since then, I think we've, we've gotten even tighter and, and written some more stuff and added some covers and stuff. So it'll be fun. This is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the pandemic was like a good time to bring Justin on because we had a lot of time to get him up to speed and then let him really excel. And Where we didn't have deadlines and he was able right. to just get comfortable. And yeah, mm-hmm. Everybody else just coasted and got comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. I have actually gotten worse. At <laughs> <laughs> so long as you know, Sam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's thinking. I just wanted to put it out there. I can't wait to see you guys. And uh, it's going to be a good show. Yeah, we'll awesome. see you soon. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to us for the podcast on all the usual suspects. And of course, be sure to tune in every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch for Shaco Sessions Live. That's a wrap.